I can't tell if I'm either very stoned or if I'm about to burst into tears. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. Ooh, it's a little bit of both. Ooh. I did write down the summary of the plot just in case I lost my place and then thought to myself, you know, you can do better than that. You can do way better than that. You can base it off memory. You see that movie how many times now? But I can't do it off memory. Top of my head off base off memory. Now Star Wars fan. Then I cannot be stumped. And now obviously I'm going to highlight my favorite parts because it's my favorite Star Wars movie. Uh, among others, I would say Empire's definitely number one. So yeah, Empire Strikes Back is definitely my favorite Star Wars movie for sure. Fucking sure, I'm very very fucked up. So this may just be a good idea to have two edibles. I may have third. I did eat a little, so they're not going to smack me as hard as they should. Who says they won't smack me at all? Who says they won't? I didn't. I didn't say they wouldn't smack me at all. I'm just saying. What if it's a little less? You know? A little less. Okay. Whoa. Shit. Stay right there. Lightsaber blades. Stay there. Hold on. Let me read just where it was. Thank you. I feel really high. That's a good thing. Hold on. Okay, let me turn off my mouse because I'm not gonna need to stop recording this video till I feel like I got this out of my system, feel I have processed this grief because that's a big thing right now with me with losing the voice actor. As we all know, James Earl Jones died in 93. Not this lightsaber, you son of a bitch. Oh no, you're not gonna give me an issue right now. Come on. Hey, bastard, come on. Get out of there, dude. Shit. Okay, I'm getting it somewhat out of there. Can I grab it? Oh, fuck, I almost had it. Oh, motherfucker. Sorry, I'm trying to get this out of the lightsaber. God damn it. It won't budge. Is this one getting stuck? It better not be. You're not gonna be getting stuck. Got it. Yeah, this one gets stuck. That's just great. That's great. Okay, it's in the lightsaber. Good. Okay, sorry. I'm just thinking. Um, back to what I was saying. Oops, that's not the right way to tighten the screw. Dumbass. Okay, let me just adjust the screw one more. Okay. Let me just make sure that's just solid. There we go. It's nice, solid. Nice. Oh, I know. The lightsaber staff is just gorgeous. Mm. Ranger's blade. Ah, sorry. I had to grab that for a second. This is for the Sith Master, my master of the Sith, that I almost had the privilege, nay, the nobility. Yes, in my character creation, I would be Darth Vader's apprentice. Mm. As for James Earl Jones right there, in red, it's for him. Ooh, nice. That's a nice, nice sound the lightsaber makes. Anyways. <laughs> okay, back to review. I'm getting way off topic, aren't I? <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I high, so you have to give me a second here. You have to give me a second to feel my feels here, because this is not going to be easy for me. I process grief with humor. So, that's just me. That's just me personally. Um, I need to get something to display the lightsaber, don't I? <laughs> Sabers, plural, because it's not one staff here. Uh, anyway, sorry, I just, I just were whatever. And 
Um, in all seriousness, um, he was a childhood actor of mine. Obviously, I grew up watching Star Wars, and I grew up on the original trilogy, when eventually I was, you know, born after him. So, <laughs> god damn it, I'm not, I don't know, I'm just, I'm like, yeah, I'm two years away from being 30, so there's that. There's that one. <laughs> there's that one. I am almost 30. My goal is, on my 30th birthday, to get my first tattoo sleep done. Like, that's dream. Right there, that, that's, that's my dream. Way to celebrate my 30th is to get a tattoo sleep started. I would be more than happy Back it off topic. I grew up, I saw the original movies, like, when I was what? Oh, God. Because I saw... Oh, yeah, damn. Right. God, I was three when I saw the first Star Wars, episode one, not... the Yeah, the actual first Star Wars is obviously episode one, so I saw episode one in 1999, so there you go. Then, obviously, when episode two came out in theaters, I saw episode three in theaters. I don't think think besides force awakens i saw any others in theaters because i oh god i wanted to try to at least see the others in theaters and give them a shot i wasn't i'm not big on the prequel trilogy so this is why the original and the i mean the sequel trilogy my bad the sequel trilogy i'm not a big fan of the prequel and the original trilogy bingo my favorites right there now we're talking empire strikes back so brain focus a movie one movie not a whole trilogy Oh boy, I need to hear that fireplace in the background. Ooh, that nice. That's nice. That sounds nice. That's nice. That's very nice. That's that's not nice. That's not nice. Okay, and who's? It's like he his like his voice made me both fear Darth Vader, be intrigued by the character, be curious about how this actor that's James Earl Jones like when I was a kid I didn't know who the actor was I'm just like hey that's Vader whenever like I think James Earl Jones of course Mufasa and he was in Sandlot Field of Dreams I believe and I know he's in other shit but most famously Vader that's why I know James Earl Jones to be besides Mufasa Vader Darth Vader the dude would have loved to train if I was Star Wars Universe, my Sith Master would have to be Vader. I'd also want to learn from Darth Maul. Hello, staff. Duh. <laughs> staff and me go hand in hand. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God, I'm way too high for this. <laughs> okay, music. Guide me through this. What is the vibe of this review? What is the vibe music? Yes. So. Anyways. I have no idea if I'm going to break down crying or not, but you know what? <laughs> if it happens, it happens. I need to get this out. And I need to process this, because I have not processed it yet. Not till now. Not till now. This is kind of like therapy. <sighs> oh, man. Oh, man. I'm sorry, I'm in deep thought. I'm thinking back to my favorite part of Empire. Uh, Empire. Can I speak? Thank you, brain. <laughs> favorite part of Empire. This <laughs> is a lightsaber duel. It's my favorite, especially the twist. One of the misquoted parts of Star Wars, the twist, the most famous line, No, I am your father. <laughs> oh god, oh my god. And then, uh, just thinking back to this, this is my favorite part of Rebels, the only episode, episodes I will watch of Rebels is the one where Darth Maul, um... Yeah, where Darth Maul comes back into the fold, this is where he's reintroduced, and then we see Vader, 
and Ahsoka Duel. That was really James Earl Jones voicing the character. I never knew this till now. I never fucking knew this. I would not have told you that James Earl Jones' voice acting sounded so different. Maybe because he was older, obviously, since, what, 70s and 80s, if I'm not wrong? And I think the first Star Wars came out in the 70s. I don't know what I can't recall. It's like, I can tell you... Wait. Big Empire... Wait, well, let me think. <laughs> I'm a Star Wars fan, yet these always escape me. This has always, always confused me when episode 4, 5, and 6 came out. I think episode 5... Oh god, wasn't that like early 80s? Like what? Off the top of my head. Yeah, because... No shit, they... No shit, the first one... The first... The fourth Star Wars. God damn it. The fourth Star Wars was 70s. Then the 80s. Late 80s. 90s. Episode 1. No shit, brain. No fucking shit. No fucking shit. <laughs> no fucking shit. <laughs> oh my god, like, no. What do you think? They just dropped them all in the 90s and said, here you go, audience. We're not even gonna give you breaks in between the fucking movies. We're just gonna... Until we hit 1999, we're just gonna pump out Star Wars and not stop. <laughs> Basically... What my brain, like, what that sarcasm was like, it's like, no, no, what, like I said, what do you think, they're just gonna pump them out every year, here's your sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit, that's great. That was a good one. That wasn't bad, that was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. That wasn't bad. That was a really good one. <laughs> Yeah, we need to stick with this playlist. I designed it for a reason. The 420 playlist, I designed it for a reason. For this very moment. Now we're going rock. Yes, we are. We're going... To, I actually, I think ACDC is classic metal, if I'm not wrong. I think that I consider them rock, but I consider them metal because they technically fall under the metal category, if I'm not wrong. It's more classic rock to me they fall under, to be honest. Come on, I want to skip the ad. I want to listen to this song. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Anyway. Anyway. Anyways. 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 <sighs> now, let me go to the back to the Ahsoka and Vader duel. And we'll also discuss a little bit more into my thinking of when. Yeah, we'll get to that. The dialogue exchange between Ahsoka and Vader is very intense. It's very emotional. That it always makes me tear up every damn time I watch that scene. And the closing of the duel, because it was a very quick duel, but it was very, like, yeah, I'd say the ending would have been the quickest part of it, and I'll get to why. So, what gets you in the feels is when, oh man, Oh, man. Oh. Oh, that hurts. Oh, boy, that hurts. Oh, boy. Hmm. <sighs> Vader, I think, even though Anakin was gone, after he discovered her lightsabers on the planet, that the Venatar-class Star Destroyer crash on with all the... 501st Division of Clone Troopers. That's where Vader showed up towards the end of the Clone Wars. Beautiful fucking animation. It just got better in Tales of the Empire. Way fucking better. Oh my god, they improved the animation so much. It was beautiful. Oh, it felt so Clone Wars animation, but it was so beautiful. Oh my god. Seeing Darth Vader in animation from the Clone Wars Season 7 was nuts. <laughs> but... I think Vader was trying to communicate to Ahsoka, yes, I'm Anakin, we don't have to be enemies. Like, if you just join me, the Emperor won't kill you because I know who you are, you know who I am. It's like, I'm trying to give you a hint here. <laughs> so... <sighs> Vader delivered one of the fucking coolest compliments slash threat 
to the Jedi because he was like, damn, he's holding his own against me. And, like, I'm throwing basic strikes at him, but, man, he's holding his own. He's got some training. I'm, 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 I'm intrigued. <laughs> he goes... Ezra goes to him, I don't fear you. And then Vader goes, then you will die braver than most. <laughs> I was like, Vader, did you just, you gave him a compliment, but did then threaten him at the same time. <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> but so scary. <laughs> and then he goes, perhaps I was wrong, raises his saber. And it's like, raises it. It wouldn't be the first time. And then, um, then he's like, lowers. Looks behind him. It was foretold that you would be here. A long-awaited meeting has come at last. Oh, I lied, though. He's like, I'm telling you, I'm Anakin. Just listen to me, right? So, oh my god. Oh, no. I'm trying to remember, what was that list? <gasps> oh. Oh, this is why it hurts. This is where it gets you in the feels right away. This is where it gets you in the feels. Where, after Vader says, Perhaps this child will confess what she will not. And then she was like, I'm just beginning to... How did she say it? I was beginning to question who you were behind that mask. But then it's impossible. My master cannot be as vile as you. And then he goes, Anakin Skywalker is weak. I destroyed him. And then she goes, then I will avenge his death. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Mm. Revenge is not the Jedi way. And then she goes, I am no Jedi. Oh, no. She thought Anakin was different than was not the same as Darth Vader. Oh my god. Oh. I'm crying for two reasons. <laughs> oh sorry, I'm just I'm crying for two reasons here. I'm crying for two reasons. I was also looking for a song. I'm sorry. Like, I'm trying to switch song. Um. She thinks Anakin's gone. She doesn't know that he's Vader. Just give it a different name. He's still Anakin. And then when she damaged his helmet. And. Heard his voice. She says to him, I won't leave you, not this time. He was actually thinking. He was actually trying to come through to her. He was, and he was trying to come through, and then his other personality, Vader, took over. And then he says this to her, which just kills you. Anakin is gone at that moment. He's gone. He's completely gone. He came through for a second, and then he's gone. Oh, after she said, I will, won't leave you, not this time, he goes, Oh, this hurts. Then you will die. And then he ignites his saber. I was like, oh my god. He's gone, man. So, think about this, right? He was toying with Ahsoka, just like with Ezra. When Darth Vader intends to go for the kill, he goes for the kill. He was toying with Ahsoka. He was seeing, did she remember her training? Is she good? Is she better than how he trained her? You know, that kind of shit. And we know, we've seen Anakin can handle two lightsabers at once. Impressive. Most impressive. And... <laughs> That was easily demonstrated, so he probably trained Ahsoka in dual in Jarkai, if I'm not wrong. That's the dual wheel style, if I'm correct. Um Now, when he was intending <laughs> to annihilate Ahsoka, let's just be mild here, he was intending to annihilate her in that duel. 
he wasn't fucking around. Like, those were crashing strikes he was throwing at her. Just relentless. <laughs> okay, I need some tissue. Like, I'm not going to be able to get through this as well if I don't have tissue. Oh, boy. So. All right. Enough sidetracking here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was more... Um, side tra I was sidetracked. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anywho's, haven't done, haven't even delved into the rest of the movie. I just wanted to say I miss the I miss the voice actor man. He's my childhood dude. Dude, Star Wars is my childhood right there. And it's not gonna be the same. Um, I might not watch episode 5 right now, that would be too emotionally heavy. I haven't watched the original trilogy since he passed, and it's... I'm just not ready to. I'm not ready. Chris, is he tied in one now? <laughs> oh yeah, it's not gonna be easy to watch Empire now. It's not gonna be so easy. <laughs> I didn't see Empire in that moment in Rebels against Ezra and Ahsoka was his best voice acting right there. And in Rogue One, best voice acting out of his performances at all. Empire has to be number one. Like, number one. Oh. oh I'm sorry. Oh, stupid nose, damn it. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh boy. I'm sorry, I don't handle grief and death that well, so I'm sorry. I just don't handle it well. Ah. <sighs> Oh man, dude. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> That's impressive. They died in 93. And. 93 years old, I mean. And, um. His legacy is carrying on way after his performance as Vader. Just think about that for a minute. AI, now that's the deal that he made with Lucasfilm to use his voice for future movies. Like, after his passing, this is a deal he made. AI can use his voice. So, I'm sure they can just reference the fuck out of his voice right there through the multiple performances he has in games as well. If at all. I don't know if he voiced in any of the games, but I can find out. <laughs> um, Vader is my favorite Sith Lord. For many reasons. The character is so complicated. So tragically complex. As a villain, he's terrifying. His presence is in intimidating and imposing on its own. He doesn't even have to ignite his lightsaber. His breathing is haunting and very creepy. It's like, um, when he did actually turn off his life support for a second to hide his breathing... <laughs> oh god then you hear the breathing his saber ignites he's a drama queen let's be real Darth Vader's a drama queen <laughs> oh let's be real for a minute um okay let's dive into the movie you know what enough chit chat and sidetracking I'm sorry about that I am trying to be better with my ADHD like that um uh, anyway, anyways, uh, God, my heart just hurts. Anyways, okay, where were we? Okay, I was looking at my script a little bit, so now I know where we're at. Okay, 
So the movie is basically three years after the Battle of Yavin for the Death Star's destruction when it was destroyed, and obviously Luke Skywalker blew it the fuck up because he's a badass like that. First time flight an X-Wing destroys the Death Star with twin proton torpedoes. And by sheer fucking space magic luck. <laughs> oh yeah, the fun that's gonna be fun for episode four. I'm gonna rip it to shreds. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I will. I just will. <laughs> I can't really truly rip it to shreds rip it to shreds because they had what they had at that time and I can't hate on it because it looks amazing to this day. It sounds amazing, looks amazing in 4K, so anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, anyways, oh boy, okay, let's do this. So, yeah, Darth Vader, and basically that person forced her, the Dark Lord of the Sith. Oh boy. Is hunting Luke pretty much. He's hunting that motherfucker. Like, let's be serious. He was hunting Luke Skywalker. He wasn't searching. No, no, no. He's been searching for their own base. There's a difference. When he hunts you, you have nowhere to hide. <laughs> so, the rebels had to had to relocate a base to so, to Snow Planet Hoth, which is inhabitable during nighttime in general like if you are not kept warm enough hypothermia will set in like that and that's pretty much the planet's surface is an atmosphere is more than sub-zero there's no way you make it without proper equipment on to keep yourself warm it's insanely cold <laughs> so how the walkers the at, -AT walkers how the Fuck, they are weatherproof. The, 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 the apparently cold doesn't mess with their, you know, um, with the with the mechanics, I guess. So, <laughs> I don't know much about the the walkers. I want to know more about them. I know about the ones from the Clone Wars. I can tell you a shit ton about those things. Uh, but the AT AT walkers are more basic. I know enough about them to say enough about them. But still. <laughs> Um, oh my god, I totally forgot you guys, it's been almost a half hour, did I forget this? Grab your joints, grab your blunts, grab your edibles, grab your pen, grab your bong, wait, wait, pipe, uh, bong, pipe, joint, blunt, pen, dab, he, six stoner essentials, it's always the dab that is... The most precious of the essentials. Just like the Mind Stone, it's important to complete the Stoner Session. Assemble all six and you have the perfect session. <laughs> How do we jump the marble for a second there? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyways, so Darth Vader has been searching for the Rumble base, obviously, for, what, three years now, obviously, so it's been three years. God, I am so fucking high, I almost did not recognize I was talking. <laughs> what did my script say? Right. He sent out probe droids. One landed on Hoth. Looks like a meteor crash. Han has to investigate it. Luke investigates it eventually. Encounters a Wampa. He gets taken by the damn thing for dinner, pretty much. <sighs> hmm. Luke's been missing, obviously, as a report in, so then Han goes and searches for him. One of the coolest fucking lines. It's like, your Tauntaun will freeze before you reach the first marker. They'll see you in hell. <laughs> that was a cool fucking line. It's like, my friend's out there. Oh my god. Their friendship was cool. That was awesome. That was fucking awesome. Um, anyway. So eventually, you know, Luke gets back, you know, discovered by Speeder, and then the probe droid finds the shield generator. That's a big giveaway. There's a base. Then it reports back to the Empire, and then Han and Chewie blow it up. And... Whew. 
Oh, it's just cool when Vader's on screen. It's just the coolest thing. <laughs> there. The Rebels are there. <laughs> uh, I can't remember the... Um, the rank and the character. Who was that one that he said... Um, something, something, prepare your troops for a surface attack. Like that kind of shit. Um. I know Admiral Piet was, like, you know, promoted pretty damn fucking quickly. <laughs> Who isn't in that scenario? <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You have failed me for the last time. Force chokes you from a fucking planet or galaxy away. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, God. I need to shut the fuck up. I need to shut up. I need to shut up. I need to shut up. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Me and my friend would be dying right now with what I would have said. Oh my god, he would have had the perfect joke for that one. The perfect fucking... Perfect fucking joke for that. I can tell you that right now. He'd be on point with that shit. He would be dying right now. God. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, so. Empire's on the way to Hoth. They're about to touch... Um... They're about to touch down the surface, and after Leia's like, oh yeah, you're gonna get your reward, and like, or what, are you out of here, kind of bullshit. And they know they love each other, come on, it's obvious. Like, so fucking obvious. Now, where is my fucking music? Come on, playlist. Okay, I will accept that one, because it's funny as fucking hell. I will listen to this one. I gotta turn this up a little bit. from Star Brothers is fucking funny. It's great. Anyway. <laughs> I think I reviewed Star Brothers. Have I? I don't think I did. I'll have to review it someday because my god is it funny. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so, the Battle of Hoth is about to start because all of a sudden you hear this rumbling and this thumping under the ice. That is above them. The base is all throughout the planet, underground, and above the surface for the speeders and the X Wings and what have you, and transports. Yeah, that shit. Anyway, the walkers have been spotted. You're fucked at that point. That's our fucking tanks, man. They sent those in. You're fucked. Be real. Like, you're fucked at that point. Fuck whatever you've got. Whatever. Whatever. You ain't got no chance against the walkers unless... Oh, you did what Luke did! You fucking do his trick. I will get to. <laughs> They're lucky Vader did not enter the surface in that battle. He would have cleared all the fields in no time. <laughs> God. That's true. Vader would just have a field day, man. <laughs> Oh, you have a speeder on that's cute. Grabs it with the force, throws it. <laughs> Vader's a beast, man. Damn. Damn. Yeah, when Vader, like, we're talking the Sith half of Anakin's life, like, how old was he when he became Darth Vader? What, his 20s into his 30s? I can't remember. Well, let's do the math. If I remember right here. He was 19 by the time of Attack of the Clones. It's Anakin's... Blah, 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 he aged... Into his late 20s. Yeah, he was in his late 20s when he became Vader. And then he got like... Uh, years later, I think he was what? In his... 40s by the time he died in episode 6. I think? He was in his 40s? So in Empire, he was like... Yeah, it was like late... Yeah, he was late, like, 30s at that point then. An Empire, that's impressive. So, yeah, he was pretty much in his prime. Oh, yeah, he could have wiped the field clean. Oh, yeah. 
But then again, if Luke senses presence, you know, now that Luke's attuned to the Force a little more and he has his lightsaber and what have you, um, what she used on a walker, it's pretty cool. So obviously Luke is feeling better. He gets into a speeder and then the Battle of Hoth commences. Luke eventually figured out that the armor's too thick. They can't shoot the laser. They can't shoot the blasters at it because it's not going to touch it. So they have to figure this out. How about you take a rope Spin around the fucking thing, like, in Civil War with Spider-Man, which he referenced Empire. <laughs> Good job, Peter. <laughs> so, yeah. They take down a walker, and then they shoot the damn thing, and it blows to Kingdom Come. <laughs> and... After the Empire gains the gains the middle ground, you know, they gain the advantage of the battle because they shot down Luke's speeder, and now he has to be on foot after blowing up another walker, which he cut with his lightsaber into. <laughs> cut into with his saber. Um, yeah, it blows up. And that was cool. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, yeah, then he had to get back to the base on foot. Or did R2 pick him up? Or did someone pick him up after the bell? No, he must have made it on foot. Jesus, yeah, he wasn't that far away from the base. So, not from his X-Wing either. So, there you go. He could have had R2 fly and come to him. No, 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 no. Because Vader would have just taken out that X-Wing from the sky. Jesus, that would be easy way to get Luke. <laughs> Jesus. Easiest way to get him. <laughs> then it's like, hey, nope. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, what song do I feel like listening to right now? Oh, yes, this one. Oh, that's a good one, too. Anyway. Uh, sorry, a little sniffly here. Anyway. Vader eventually enters the base. The Millennium Falcon is taking off. Luke. I'm s Leia, my bad. Leia, Han, Chewie, and C-3P are good. Luke is escaping to go to Dagobah because he got the message after he escaped from the Wampa. I left that out. I am so fucking sorry. <laughs> I was going way too fast into the plot. Basically, Luke had a, a apparition. He saw an apparition of Obi-Wan. He told him, Luke, you must go to the Dagobah system. There, you will meet the master that trains me, Yoda. That's right, yes, you must sir, You must go to Yoda, the Jedi Master who trained me. That's how the line goes, damn it. There you go. And he does, well, just that. He goes to Dagobah. While Millennium Falcon needs to escape from the Star Destroyers, which are a little uh, hard to escape from when they're, you know, circling the fucking planet. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> that would be a little hard, wouldn't it? Right? Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> um, anyway. Anyway. Vader obviously can't find Luke, and, you know, he's far away from Vader's reach for now. Wouldn't have Vader thought to at least look to the Force and try to reach out for Yoda just to sense him alone so he could track him down and, you know, try to reason with the motherfucker? Because <laughs> he knows he's going to lose in a lightsaber duel against him. Like, maybe not. Dooku was able to, was able to kill... A giant master of Yoda species, so I guess it just depends on the practitioner and their health and their energy level and what have you. Yeah, factors. Anyway. So Luke crashes on Dagobah, and she eventually finds Yoda. Doesn't know who's Yoda until Obi-Wan and Yoda have a conversation. Like, um, wars do not make one great is one of my favorite, um, kind of lines. Um... That is one of my favorite lines. And, um, obviously the part where Yoda reveals himself, you know, um, after he's saying, um, no, he's too old, too old to begin the training. <laughs> well, here's the exception, motherfucker, you made with Anakin. He was too, he was too old to begin the training. So, <laughs> a little, um, hypocritical there, aren't you? <laughs> 
shit, that's funny. Well, it was the exception with Obi-Wan because he had to train Anakin because technically Qui-Gon was Anakin's master and then it's Obi-Wan now. So, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that one, that one. We are going way too far back. We need to stay on Empire right here. We need to stay in the here and the now. <laughs> I was about to make a Spaceballs reference. <laughs> oh boy, I need to focus. <laughs> so. Hmm. Yeah, so now we catch back up where Leia and Han and Chewie and C-3PO now figure out the hyperdrive has been damaged. Now they are in asteroid field and trying to get to this big asteroid and invading TIE fighters at the same fucking time. Because, you know, why not? Eventually they find a cave. I say it with quotes, quotations because we know it ain't a cave. Oh, no, 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 it's not a cave whatsoever. Anyway, so Luke is training up, you know, yeah, he's now like doing flips and shit, running, jumping, typical Jedi shit, Jedi training, yeah, typical Jedi training, and yeah, he discovers this uh, little uh, cave over there, he sets down Yoda, then he's thinking about it. What did Yoda say? Hold on. I think... I can't remember. I'm drawing a blank on one of the lines. I know he said to him, Your weapon, uh, need it, you will not. He takes it anyway. Because Yoda was, like, testing him. He's like, yeah, you may not need your weapon. It's like, that's not exactly needed, but it kind of is needed to take it anyway. Kind of thing, if you have to. It was really testing him to see if what he was willing to see in the Cave of Evil. And as we all know, it's different for everybody. In Luke's case, it's seeing himself as Darth Vader. Because that's what he would turn into if the Emperor is able to turn Luke to the dark side. He would just be the next Darth Vader. Uh, because Anakin would just have his use up. Bam, he gone. Here, Luke. You're Vader now. Yeah. It would be terrifying if Luke was a Sith, man. Ooh, that would be scary. Ooh. Oh, boy. That'd be scary. <laughs> anyway. So, the Millennium Falcon is now flown out of the said cave after it started moving. And no, it's a giant fucking space worm. And it was about to eat him. So they get out just in the nick of time. And now they now they are trying to escape the Death Stars. Star Destroyers. I'm sorry, not Death Stars. Oh, God, that'd be terrifying. Death Stars multiple? Jesus. No, no, no. Star Destroyers. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm high right now. Damn. Jesus. So. <laughs> um. Yeah, I know they latch on to the Star Destroyer and turn off the power because then they're not seen anymore after they were evading TIE Fighters. Not TIE Fighters, after they are evading the uh, Star Destroyers and all that shit, the, uh, the turrets and everything. Yeah, they just floated away with the garbage and Boba Fett was ready on their asses because he was one of the bounty hunters that was tasked to find the Millennium Falcon. And by the way, Boba Fett, he was right on their asses from the start. It's clear, like, we know him. <laughs> that motherfucker is good. Because when he has a bounty, oh, he means business. <laughs> he means freaking business, man. Um, anyways. They're searching for Cloud City in, um, yeah, Bespin. I just can't remember the system. Um, I can't, I really can't remember the system. That always evades me. They're looking for Lando Calrissian in Bespin. And Cloud City is where he's known to be. And... They eventually find him after they float away with the garbage of the Star Destroyer and Boba Fett follows them as well. That's how he's able to get Cloud City that fast. That's right. Then Luke has a vision that his friends are in danger. Oh, sorry, his friends are in danger. And 
he's no match for the Raider. He has not completed his training. Obi-Wan and Yoda were trying to warn him against this, right? And... <sighs> thinking. Yeah, so Luke goes anyway. And, obviously, you know, there's the lesson taught before this that was like, you know, size matters not... <laughs> In some instances... <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> in some instances. <laughs> Anyways, um, brain is not functioning right now. <laughs> I right now, Jesus, I was on a roll. I was getting into this. Now my brain is freezing up. I'm just like, heh. <laughs> Anywho's, um, hmm. The Millennium Falcon is given passage and to land on a hangar. I can't remember the goddamn hangar number, whatever. The small details are escaping me. I haven't watched in a while, so forgive me on that one. And Lando meets him eventually. He's like a real uh, um, smoothie and all that kind of shit. Anyway, they're eventually given a tour of the, uh, the, 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 the Cloud City buildings. And, you know, the Leia gets comfortable, so does Han and Chewie. C-3PO gets blown up by Stormtrooper. Empire's there. So we find out later on that Lando had to make a deal with Vader and the Empire in order to keep his operation and all that bullshit. Um, yeah, so there's Boba Fett, too. He's able to claim the bounty now on Han Solo. So, yeah, he's, he, yeah. <laughs> he's claiming that bounty, I'm telling you, dude. He's claiming it. So, Vader goes, we would be honored if you would join us. <laughs> yeah, try to shoot at Vader. He just goes, <laughs> nope. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> just grabs the grabs his pistol. That was cool. He didn't even have to use his saber. <laughs> That tells you Vader's a badass. <laughs> so eventually, you know, Luke is making his way to Bespin. Mm, yeah, bullshit. And then, you know, um, the Wookiee and uh, Leia and um, Han. You know, Han's being interrogated and all that shit. Yeah, Leia and uh, Chewie are in a cell. And they're waiting for Han. And then Han comes back. You know, oh, whatever. Yeah, he punches Lando. That was great. <laughs> he punches him. Um, you can tell Leia loves Han. Like it's obviously love each other. Like whatever, <laughs> it's obvious. Anyway, <sighs> they now are brought to a carbonate um room. You know the car the carbon the carbonate room. You know yeah that shit. Um, you get frozen carbonite. There we go. They're in that room, and it's to be tested on Han Solo to make sure the Emperor's prize will not be damaged. <laughs> we must test it on Captain Solo. <laughs> um, yeah, and Boba Fett protested, as and was would anyone with his bounty like him, bounty hunter like that, I would protest too, especially if I was a Mandalorian. Ooh, I would protest. Oh, damn. So, um... Yeah, he makes it through the car through the carbonite freezing. He's a perfect hibernation. His perfect hibernation, and he yeah he's alive. That's like when C three P was like, well, if he made it through the carbonite freezing, that is, or the hibernate or the hibernation process, that is something along those lines. I can't remember which one he said. Well, Calrissian, is he alive? <laughs> yeah, he's alive in perfect hibernation too. So he's escorted, so Boba Fett is having Han Solo on the block of that damn ship being escorted to the Slave One, his ship. Cool fucking design, by the way. Oh, that was neat. Wow. Damn, that was cool. <laughs> that was sick. That was sick. Um, 
Luke eventually is landing. He was he was able to get to land and all that shit. So he encounters Boba Fett. They he exchanges. He doesn't ex get to exchange gunfire with uh or blaster fire with Boba, but Boba sure as hell shot at him. Luke could have easily deflected those blaster bolts, but then again, he doesn't know how accurate Boba is and what tricks that Mando has up his sleeve. So, um, yeah, he gets away with um. Well, yeah, they almost got away with um, uh, Leia and Chewbacca and C-3PO. They almost got a... The Stormtroopers almost got away with them. So R2 is going to go look for him and all that shit, try to meet up with them. Um, Luke is off on his own to find Vader, which he doesn't know he's going to find Vader. But she kind of knows he's going to find Vader, so he knows. He knew. Shit. But he just wasn't ready. Oh, he ain't going to be ready whatsoever for this. So, he makes it to the Carbonite Freezing Chamber, the facility under Cloud City, right? He finds it. The room lights up. I would say it lights up orange. I'd say it lights up orange, right? Orange. The force is with you, young Skywalker, but you are not a Jedi yet. Ooh. That was, like, some of the only dialogue exchanged in that moment. Um. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, they ignite their lightsabers. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think what was the other dialogue. Hmm. Oh, yes. I think this is what Vader said, if I remember right. Huh. Obi-Wan has taught you well. You have learned how to control your anger. Now, release your hatred. I'm sorry, no, yeah, just control your fear. Now, release your anger. All your hatred can't destroy me. <laughs> and then Luke obviously jumps up and he's like, impressive. Most impressive. <laughs> oh, shit. Another great piece of dialogue um, from that duel. As later on, you know, when um, when Luke is able to get away from Vader, obviously after he's... Well, he's following Vader, my bad. He's following Vader and all that. So I'd say it lights to be white in this part, right? Lights to be white. Uh-huh. And... Oh, man, that took some while. That took a while to adjust. That was cool. Um, anyways. I'd say it lights to be white. So, don't know where he is. And then Vader shows himself and about scares the ever-living shit out of me later on. So he shows up and then he's throwing objects at Luke. Luke uh, flies out the window, you know, because the the vacuum that's in the um, the chamber and all that shit. So, you know, and he gets his lightsaber and then he gets up and he looks around, tries to escape from Vader. All of a sudden his lightsaber ignites and wham, he just tries to kill Luke at that moment. And he misses. So Luke just like about jumped at that moment like we all did. Damn, that was a bit of a jump scare. That was cool. That was sweet. Anyways. I'm very thirsty. I'm very thirsty. After this review, I'm going to get some uh, water. I'm going to get some of the drink. Probably some water. <laughs> Maybe some orange juice. I feel like orange juice. I, like, I want orange juice now. I want orange juice. <laughs> Oh, that's better. Oh, let's lay back a bit. Feels good. Anyway, this is coming up to the big twist of the movie. We're coming up to the end now. This is the end. It's coming up. We're almost there, folks. We're almost there. I fear this is going to be interesting. <laughs> anyway, I almost lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, the duel. <laughs> The duel, that's right, the duel. Oh, stretch. Oh, that's better. Oh, that was a good stretch. Okay, that's better. So. Okay, I had to pick songs, so hold on just, just a minute. Oh, yeah, there's a good song. There's a good song. Anyway. Hmm. That's right, because they're exchanging swings, you know, exchanging strikes. Uh, Luke was able to smack him on the shoulder a little bit. It's like a little back off kind of shit. 
Um, and then he had to evade Vader's, like, wild swings at him. Jesus. And then eventually, wham, there goes his right hand to the lightsaber. It drops away from Luke. He loses his hand and his saber. <sighs> oh, boy. The dialogue, though. Okay. I know the first part of it was, you're beaten. This is useless to resist. Don't make me do not... S oh, crap. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm misremembering. Don't let yourself get destroyed as Obi-Wan did. That pisses off Luke, and then we get to this. And then he's like, um... Yeah, he screams. There is no escape. Don't make me destroy you. He's like, Luke, you've only... No, it's like, you only have begun to discover your power. Join me, and I will complete your training. <laughs> With our combined strength, we can end this destructive conflict and bring order to the galaxy. I will never join you if you only knew the power of the dark side. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. It's like he told me enough. He told me you killed him. No, I am your father. <laughs> Bum bum bum, big twist. There you go. Yeah, that was a big fucking mind fuck right there for a second. The first time I watched that, I was like, "Huh?" <laughs> Must have been like what? I was pretty young when I saw Empire, so you know, because I it was VHS and then DVD and then now I have 4K. So there you go. Mm, beautiful in 4K. Excellent, excellent on 4K. Anyways. Yeah, so then, you know, he looks thinking about it. He falls back. He doesn't join Vader. Yeah, Vader almost had Luke in his grasp. He had him for a minute there. He had him. Then Luke is sending a telepathic message to, um, to Leia to come get him because he's in danger. He's pleading to her, so then she convinces Lando to turn around and save Luke, even though he's being chased by TIE Fighters. To save him, Luke gets a robotic hand, and, um, the Rebels fight another day, kind of thing. Um, wow, I actually got through that better than I thought I did. Oof, man, that was an emotional review right there. Wow. Damn. Oh, man. It's not gonna be easy to watch it again, I'm telling you. Okay, anyways. This has been the Daily Jeffrey 77. Hope you enjoy, and uh, hope the premiere goes well. See you guys later.